Some of you are familiar with what this is. This is a uh, 30 caliber plastic ammo box. Well, like a lot of things at my house, it's not quite what it seems. So, um, this is going along with the issue with uh, cleaning up the uh, Jacob's tape or Jacob's collet chuck. We're going to turn this ammo box into a <clears throat> sealed dishwasher. The uh, outside seal is all the way around the periphery. Fairly heavy. Pretty durable. And we're going to add loads of Costco's finest non-degradable soap or environmentally responsible okay it's gonna make me feel better about using it I'm sure and uh, we're gonna lay that in there pretty thick I've already knocked a lot of the loose stuff off of it but we are gonna lay that on nice and thick and let it do its thing to crank up the soap. We're not very far from the hot water heater here, so it's it quite torchy. And I'm a guy who's not afraid to use hot water to clean up stuff. Hot water and soap work very well. In my younger days, getting trained, engine rebuilding and all that kind of stuff, after you got done boring or honing or whatever, it was hot water and soap to clean it up. So, let's do a test here. Ooh, not quite watertight. Hmm. We've been misled. Maybe it's just airtight, not watertight. Wait a little bit more. And we're going to close the lid. We're going to put the camera down and we're going to give it a shake, shake, shake. All right. Now it's been thoroughly agitated. First little grease. Second verse. The same as the first. You can imagine me cleaning intercooler tubes on my kid's turbo escort with a toilet brush. Anything's possible in this basement, folks. Dose. Costco's fun. environmentally responsible stuff. This again. Close the lid. Okay, we've uh, taken uh, the plunge and we've rinsed most of the grease off of these parts. Uh, this is going to be my uh, inaugural attempt at evapor rust, just like the big boys use. Um, I've done electrolysis. I liked it. Um, it's just in the basement. It's a little, a little dicey to be creating hydrogen in your basement. So uh, it's freezing outside. So depending on what I got going on, um, I don't want my uh, Ice buildup. It's a lovely uh, yellow um, I'm gonna have to make a parallel to Mountain Dew or uh, something else. But uh, we're gonna do the small parts. That ammo box took about half. So that's fine. And uh, 
into the tank they go. Small parts, they said uh, 1 to 12 hours. Okay. I'm good with that. Oh no, he's put his hand in the tank. Uh, yeah, with my work history, that's pretty minor. Okay. And just a splash more. Wasn't airtight. There it is. Let me sink it goes. Rinse the hands. Uh, and now we are uh, de rusting. The uh, big one here looks actually really pretty good, just needs a little, little touch up. It's going over to the bench and it's going to get hit with uh, fluid film for tonight. And I'll finish it later, but uh, these are the areas that uh, do the impacting. As you're smacking this thing, that's actually what's doing the impacting. Alright, um, go back over to bench. Okay, uh, we've got everything uh, being de rusted. And this goes out to uh, Lance, the uh, king of clean. Uh, at the uh, Active Atom channel. Uh, this is a little gadget I picked up at, yeah, you know who, uh, a while back. And it wasn't for the reasons you might think. I was doing a little bit of uh, cylinder head porting and we had a little failure. But my uh, improvisation has worked out pretty good. Uh, so, it's a variable speed, up to 10 grand. Um, this is a uh, felt wheel on this side here. Um, seems to work out pretty good. With the grinder wheel, I've really never even touched it. I don't worry about it, but I use it, leave it on there for the additional mass to keep things going. But uh, as far as speed, it has no torque at low speed, but if you're just wanting to lightly buff something, you notice it'll get after. But, uh, it was uh, not a ton of money, but being variable speed, sits on some nice rubber feet, so as you notice, it didn't shake its way off the bench. So it's it's kind of nice for just a couple little small cleanup items. And then this, when it has a fresh wheel on it, or a sanding disc, or whatever you want to put on the end of this thing, it actually has sufficient amount of torque. I, like I said, I've uh, poured some aluminum heads with it before. It wasn't too awful. Uh, we brought the big part back over. You'll see the glisten. Uh, that is the fluid film that I've used on it. Again, I am not endorsed by fluid film. I just happen to use it. It works fantastic. So as soon as you get it out of that water, I don't blow it dry. This is a um, dielectric, so it will basically help displace the water. And if I came back a year from now, it would look just like that. So it's great stuff. You can pick it up. Amazon, wherever. Lowe's actually carries it on the shelf for a little bit more money. But uh, we're going to let the other stuff de-rust and uh, keep working on that. And I did get something else. Let me grab that. <sighs> okay. Sorry for the handheld, but here we go. Uh, these are from a master car. There's a uh, brand new set of uh, loose ball bearings. Those are the quarter. 0.25. And line item number two are 1764. They come in just a little north of 250. And then here is a 6.5 millimeter set. They come in, I think, at like 0.255 or thereabouts. So my intent on that is the, uh, the races that the ball bearings go into. I was going to start off with the standard quarter inch. Uh, we showed you the other ones they were pretty nasty but uh, there's some wear. I can rotate them and actually pick up wear on them. That's how beat up they were. So we're gonna go from there and try to selectively go at the 250 and then we're gonna go ahead and go on up to the uh, 
next size and see if I've got good clearance. Tighten it up just a little bit, and if necessary, I'll go to the bigger one. I don't think I'll need to go there, but we've got it here in reserve. And that's about it for this evening. We're going to keep working on that thing. I look forward to having that uh, back together really quick. The other item I wanted to discuss with the team, because with the comments that we get, this is the pen that I showed you the night that was broke. I was noticing that dude's hollow. And it's hollow here as well. So I'm going to put it in front of the jury that uh, since that sheared, perhaps that was the point of intended shearing. Because uh, if you go down to the base, it's a solid pin. So I don't know. I'll throw that out for the jury. You guys can let me get, let me know. But it sheared there, and it looks like it was crossed. It was drilled down. Uh, there's really no place for lubrication to go, so I'm not really sure. Uh, the only thing I could come up with is maybe that was the intended shear point. I don't know. Just speculation. You guys can help coach me on that. Anyway, that's it. Thanks. Thanks for all the new subscribers, and uh, uh, if you've never been on the channel before, uh, if you're interested in this kind of stuff, there'll be a lot more to come. Uh, this is Dan. Have a great evening. Yeah, we've uh, got the screw out of there, and we're now taking this key out. Oh, that's not your daddy's key. There. It was a standard key that was machined to allow that... key to be restrained. Well, that's going to be fun to find. <laughs> I think it's going to be a find how do you make it kind of a thing. Yeah. Get the screw. Get down in there like that. Something I haven't seen. Yeah, it looks like we can uh, make them without too much trouble. I just have to match that degree and then uh, make sure that I don't disintegrate it in half. Oh, that's going to be fun. But uh, as I think everybody will agree, that one's massively chowdered up. As with a lot of things with this deal, it was uh, handled by uh, Rough Man McBurley. Yeah, sure, balls. Yikes. So, I just wanted to apologize again for the quality on the last couple videos. The focusing has been improving, but I've put out some real schlock, so I uh, will keep you posted on this one, but it was uh, just a few minutes before karate class, and I uh, figured I would get down here and uh, see if the uh, overpriced uh, air coil would do any good on that screw and it did its job I'm uh, more of a cheap investment guy I would uh, just as soon use um, uh, transmission fluid and acetone but you know there it is so I'll add this to the next one thanks guys hey um we're taking a look at the pin. Again, this is the uh, key coming out of the uh, Jacobs collet chuck. And we talked about the taper that's cut in there. 
Well, there's the screw. Oh, there we go. There's the screw, and there's the taper. So that was sitting down flush, holding the key in position. Well, my question was, what size is that, as far as the taper? Uh, I remember reading somewhere that an 82 was uh, prominent for a countersunk, so I pulled out my... Let's see here... My 82 degrees. And hard for you to see specifically, but seems to fit that taper pretty well. Well, that's one way of doing it. Let's take a look at the screw itself. You can see that. That's along the taper, and it seems to fit pretty good. So I'm going to say that's a 82 degree taper on that countersunk screw. I'm sorry about the focus. I get too close. This thing does not like it. And we'll go from there. So I'm going to call that a 82 degree taper. And when we get the key ready, we'll probably set this on the mill, have the key set up, and I'll let this 82 degree come down and gnaw on that thing for a while. And that should be able to reproduce that without a lot of trouble. I'm not going to go with a super hard key on this one because that's not its purpose. Its purpose is to index, not to uh, keep it from shearing. So, And that's about it. So I just wanted to show you that a little bit. not its purpose. Its purpose is to index, not to uh, keep it from shearing. So, And that's about it. So I just wanted to show you that a little bit.